President Biden hasn't named an acquisition leader for the Pentagon yet. When the Senate confirms that nominee, the next Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment will need to make sure acquisitions at the department can keep up with China's military modernization. Chris Doherty, senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security, former senior advisor to the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Strategy and Force Development, and writing under the title, Want an Agile Pentagon, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls, at Defense One. You got me with the TLC reference. I, I, I went back to my top 40 DJ days immediately upon seeing this. You write about the strategies that the Pentagon puts out every four years, Chris, and then you write, there's a better way to manage complex processes like these and some Pentagon and congressional staff know it. Why don't they use agile development method more than they do, Chris? The bottom line, I think, is that it just goes against the grain of what they've done their entire careers. Um, there is an enormous amount of inertia in a lot of these processes. I mean, there, there are some legal and, and fiscal constraints. I do think that uh, the legal requirement to put out a uh, president's budget submission every year and an NDAA every year causes a sort of yearly cyclical process. And there is a legal mandate to put out a strategy review every four years. That's you know the, the, the law that mandated the quadrennial annual defense review. But between that, there's nothing to say that the department can't manage its processes in a much more agile fashion. Um, and there's nothing that says that the, the quadrennial defense review you know, has to take a year to a year and a half and has to produce this enormously elaborate document. Um, there's nothing to say that a new team can't just come in and say, okay, here are our initial priorities. Here is our update of the national defense strategy, much like the administration has done with the national security strategy, I might add. Um, there's nothing to say that they can't do that. A lot of these restraints are internal uh, and cultural rather than legal or, or, um, or requirements. What is striking to me about your proposal, Chris, is that at least in software development, the department has a lot of demonstrations of success of this strategy over the past three, four, five years. It's working. And so it strikes me that this would be a, an easy transition in the policy making and strategy development uh, world as well. Absolutely. One of the things that, that struck me as I was discussing this um, with my wife, who's in software development, who's a, an often um, guest on your show, was the, the analogs between strategy and guidance and concepts and, and software. And, and really, if you think about strategy and guidance and concepts, they are the software that runs the bureaucracy of DOD. There are a series of, of heuristics and if-then statements and prioritizations that helps this vast bureaucracy make the complex decisions on a daily basis without having to run every single major decision up to the secretary. And, and these documents, if, if done correctly and done in an agile way, can start their guidance on day one of an administration. But what we've done over the last arguably 30 years is we wait a year, we develop this sort of perfect four-year strategy review concept with this enormous process with a lot of you know, input from every part of the department. We go out and we gather data, then we an issue forth like we're Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with these, you know, these tablets, these, these, these proclamations, which usually by that point are overcome by events. I mean, the classic case is the 2001 QDR, which came out three weeks after the events of 9-11, but it's not alone. If you look at the 2014 QDR, which, you know, basically was overcome by the reemergence of ISIS and the reemergence of Russia as a strategic competitor, you know, all of a sudden you've got all these reviews that are, that are fine in and of themselves, but the process to get there takes so long but they don't end up influencing DOD policy and DOD budgets and DOD capability development in the way that they're supposed to. And I think if you look at the 2018 NDS, it's another example of that. The NDS probably could have been finished sometime in mid to late 2017, and it could have come out early enough to have really meaningfully influenced the FY19 and FY20 budgets. And instead what you had was kind of a glancing blow on those budgets and this promised masterpiece that never really came to fruition in 2020. And frankly, the NDS, you really can't see major shifts in investment priorities until FY 2021, which when you think about it, is the last budget guided ostensibly underneath that strategy. So that's really not the way we're going to keep up with Chinese weapons development and Chinese concepts development. Um, the converse of that, it strikes me, one potential bright spot here is a couple of months ago, Space Force released its first doctrine guidance and the guardian responsible for that came on this program and told me that's going to be a living document. That it's not gonna be set in stone and they're going to update it and, and evolve it over time. Is that a step in the right direction, at least that concept a step in the right direction, Chris? Absolutely, and I would also like to commend um, the Marine Corps under you know, General Berger. He came in 
from um, from Marfor Pack with a lot of ideas about how the Marine Corps could better compete with China in the Pacific. And he married those ideas and concepts up quickly with war games and concept development that have been going on down at Mexidic for you know years and in some cases decades when we when we talk about expeditionary based base operations. And he very quickly put out guidance to his force that probably wasn't perfect at the time. It was quite good, but it wasn't perfect and he knew it, but he did it fast to reorient the Marine Corps quickly. And if you're going to be a leader of a large complex organization, you can't take two years to get your guidance out to them because they'll just keep moving on inertia. They'll keep doing what they've always been doing. And frankly, if we keep doing what we've always been doing, we won't keep pace with China. Um, I, I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. I don't, I'm reading between the lines, but you write toward the end of this piece, we must always remember that processes are a means to an end, not an end in themselves. And that ties, I think, with what you just said if we keep doing what we're doing, we're gonna keep getting what we've been getting, right? Absolutely, and I think you know there's a, a fantastic piece out recently by the Hudson Institute, um, by Dan Pat and, and another fellow there about how we can reform PPVE. But I think when you look at the Pentagon processes, there's been a lot written on how to make acquisition, the 5,000.1 process more agile and more responsive to, to, to the demands of, of DOD. But what we haven't spent our time looking at is what comes upstream of that decision to buy something. How do we look at the world? How do we look at the strategic environment? How do we make decisions? How do we devise concepts for how we deal with challenges and threats posed by China and Russia, and then rapidly transition those into requirement statements that, that become capabilities? And that is a place where I think that we're just ripe for, you know, to use a Silicon Valley term to continue the, the metaphor, we're ripe for disruption. We're ripe to make that process go faster because there's no reason other than sort of bureaucratic inertia, frankly, that those things have to take four year, five year time cycles. And until we can cut those time cycles down to months to single digit years, rather than years to, to you know, five year fit ups or, or decades, we're just not gonna keep pace. And I think we have to let go of the concept of we're gonna come down with a perfect strategy off of Mount Sinai and say, look, this is a good enough strategy. It conveys our top level priorities. It gets what we need to get out into the hands of the bureaucracy, the services, the, the combatant commands, and then let's iterate on it. Much like you mentioned with Space Force, let's put this out, then get feedback and constantly update this document as need be. Chris, thanks very much as always. Great to have you back.